it's lovely to talk to you good people of Denham, St Mary's, how wonderful and I know that you'll be having a, a glorious Advent season which has just begun today as I speak to you. I'm sorry that I have been defeated by time. I had promised to do this fairly regularly to send a, a, a video uh, uh, that would appear on the website and uh, I haven't been able to keep my word altogether. But since it's Advent season, I thought it might be helpful to look at the four last things. Uh, Advent is a wonderful time. It's a time for anticipating the advent of our Lord as a baby in Bethlehem and as a king coming in glory, the first and second advent of Jesus. However, it's also a time for reflecting upon somberly and seriously reflecting upon serious issues at the beginning of the church year. Many years ago, when I was a young minister in North Wales, we had a couple who joined us and found a spiritual home with us. He, Reverend Arthur Sharman and his wife, he had been the vicar of Bootle and he settled in his retirement in North Wales and he found a spiritual home with us, joined our church. He was a wonderful man and she was a wonderful woman, a great couple. And yet he always had questions. It was his modus operandi. He always asked questions. And he would sidle up to you and ask you a really difficult question. Well, he asked me this question as we approached uh, Advent. It wasn't a difficult question. It was just this. Are you going to preach on the four last things this Advent season? You know, it's a really good opportunity for reflecting upon somber issues and the tradition is to speak on the four last things, one per week, as we lead up to the Christmas season. So I hadn't actually thought about it, but I did it that year. I thought it was a good opportunity to do some serious reflection as we begin the church year and as we look into our own hearts before all the joyous celebration of Christmas. The four last things, well, they are death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Those are the four last things, serious subjects. And so let's think together a little bit today about death. And uh, I want to read to you from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, and it's Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 13. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him according to the Lord's own word. Uh, that's a, a wonderful and inspiring passage of Scripture. It brings into focus the fact of death. Paul doesn't want us to be ignorant. Um, he, he wants us to be informed. And uh, the King James Version puts it like that. I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that we will all fall asleep. And those who have fallen asleep, we will see them again, is essentially what he's saying in that passage. I, uh, I think we all accept the inevitability of death, of course. And what Paul is saying, we do not grieve, of course we grieve deeply the loss of our loved ones, but we do not grieve with a hopeless grief. We don't grieve, grieve as those who have no hope. We have a hope that radiates with immortality, a hope that is radiant and that, that is vibrant and that is fixed and that is faith for the future and eternity in the presence of the living God in his peaceful, healing and holy presence in a, in a dimension of existence we can't even begin to get our heads around. It is so glorious. And 
Death is that event that we sometimes think of as natural when related to other people, but unnatural when it's related to ourselves. We think, yeah, we understand that people will die, but not me. Of course, intellectually, we accept the reality of death. But sometimes in our hearts, we struggle with the idea that we are mortal and we will die. I remember seeing one of those uh, silly you know, comedy sketches, Sasha Baron Cohen, who his alter ego was uh, Ali G. And on this occasion, it was spoof, all spoof interviews. He would interview people as if it was a serious subject and he was a person at the cutting edge of youth culture. And uh, they didn't realize they were being set up and it was completely spoof. On one occasion, he was interviewing a medical scientist who was talking about breakthroughs in medical science that would prolong life. Uh, and he uh, mentioned a few remarkable things, but then he said, but of course, we will still die. However, medical science advances. The reality is everybody will still die. We can't defeat death. Death will meet us all in the end. And Ali G said, well, not me, not me. He said, I, I ain't going to die. No way. I ain't going to die. Death is not for me. Oh, oh, yes. You know, you should have seen the face of the medical scientist. It was a picture. He was amazed by this young man who thought himself at the cutting edge of youth culture, but thought he was the one person that would not be visited by death. Oh, yes. He said, you will die. No, 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 no. I ain't going to die. Death is for losers, ain't for me, I ain't gonna die. That's not my future, I ain't gonna die. Well, the reality of course was that this guy didn't know he was being set up for a completely stupid and spoof interview. His face was the picture. He thought here was a person who was at the cutting edge of youth culture, but who was seriously intellectually challenged. And, and I think of course, we sometimes have in our own hearts some of that LEG concept. No, not for me. Everybody else, it's a natural thing when related to others, but unnatural when it's related to me. We accept it intellectually, but in our heart of hearts, we struggle with the whole concept and we put it on the back burner and refuse to, to really look into the awesome reality of death's claim upon us. But the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it is appointed unto man once to die. It is appointed unto man once to die. And death is an inevitability, but also death is an enemy. Death is an enemy. The last enemy to be conquered, says Paul, is death, says the scripture. The last enemy to be conquered is death but that enemy is conquered the enemy of death is conquered for us so that victory is promised and given to us in christ through his glorious resurrection i used to have a friend called arthur who um he was a hundred actually he was a member of my church he was a hundred years of age i used to visit him regularly he was a lovely old gentleman a fine committed christian and he told me the story about when he was, pardon me, he was in the Second World War and uh, he was stuck on a ridge with a companion and it was an exposed spot and they came under intense enemy fire and his friend was shot right in the middle of the forehead and died before his eyes. Arthur saw him die and uh, held him as he died and thought to himself, it's me next, it's me next. Then suddenly the Gurkhas appeared over the hill and, uh, and they drove back, they routed the enemy. The enemy were on the run and his life was spared through the intervention of the Gurkhas. And so he came home and he married and had a family. He resumed his love for tennis. He was a county player. And uh, when I used to visit him, he had a, a cabinet that was full of tennis trophies and he resumed his life in the village and uh, his involvement in the life of the church as a committed Christian. Winston Churchill said something during the Second World War that I profoundly disagree with. He was a wonderful leader and an inspiring character, but he said, we walked with death as with a close friend. We walked with death and death became our friend.
No, no, no. Death is never our friend. It was, is never our friend. That was not a view that Arthur subscribed to. He didn't see death as a friend and he didn't get him that day on the ridge as it did his companion, sadly. Eventually, of course, death met him when he was 100 years of age and achieved so much in his lifetime. But death will meet us all, but it's not a friend. It's not a friend to be welcomed. It's an enemy to be resisted. And it's an enemy that has been, thank God, utterly defeated, completely routed. And so we don't welcome death as an enemy, we resist, as a friend, we resist it as an enemy. We fight it, don't we? It's true. Of course, there is a movement, and it's a sort of uh, atheistic, uh, humanist movement that um, is trying to present death as perfectly natural. Our bodies uh, die, we go into the ground, we return to the earth, our bodies fertilize the earth, the plants grow as part of the cycle, and we become the, the, the dust of the universe. And, uh, and so it's part of the cycle, nothing to fear, all very, all very wonderful part of the process. And booklets have been written to help parents to explain death to children. And one unfortunate mum had to explain death to her little boy whose cousin had died. And she'd read the booklet so she knew what to say. And she said to him, darling, your cousin has died, but don't worry about that. That's okay, because his body will return to the earth and uh, will become like fertilizer and when the spring comes next year and we see the lovely flowers growing we'll know that your cousin has made a contribution to the beauty of the flowers uh, and and we'll think about him and the boy screamed then he shouted i don't want him to be fertilizer and he ran out of the room <laughs> And what he says has an echo in all of our hearts. We don't see our destiny as fertilizer. Of course, we do not. Uh, in fact, the, the Jews had an old proverb, which was, ever be more and more lowly in spirit, because it is the destiny of man to be the food of worms. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's the destiny of man to be linked eternally with the living God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ so that we enjoy throughout all the unborn ages of eternity the perfection and bliss of that perfect place that he has prepared for those who love him. No, it's an enemy. But here we are today remembering at this beginning of Advent season that that enemy has been conquered and that we enter into victory through Christ who has conquered death. So, I think it's so um, it's important that as we reflect upon serious issues, we remember that we serve the living God and that we take seriously the Great Commission. A friend of mine was saying that whilst the death holds no fear for him, when he goes to funerals of friends who did not know Jesus, who had not received his forgiving grace and become believers in his loving purposes, he feels a pang because he thinks, did I take the Great Commission seriously enough? Did I share the gospel with my friend on those opportunities that I had to give to him the good news of God's love in Christ Jesus? Doing so with care and with love and with wisdom, but doing it as the best that we can do it because we take the Great Commission seriously. The, the death has no fears for us, for we are in Christ Jesus and death is swallowed up in victory. But we want that victory to be shared with others. And so, as we think about death and our own relationship to that inevitable reality, we think about also the need to take the Great Commission seriously so others may know the joyous gift of life eternal in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. And it's so through the resurrection we have hope that is undiminished, that burns brightly and that opens up the way to a glorious eternity. Amen. Let's pray. 
Father, we give you thanks that at this Advent season, though we think about serious issues, we think about the Saviour who has opened up the way of life to us. Uh, we rejoice in his coming in the first Advent as a baby in, in the manger. We rejoice at the prospect of his second coming. And in this meantime, in this time between, so to speak, help us to be real with those issues that are so important that our lives may reflect your glory and your will may be done in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, so it's good talking to you again and hope to see you soon. God bless. Have a wonderful Advent season.